Hey and well met friends, Zandang here, very excited on launch day of Central Gondor. We're getting ready to start a brand new series going through Central Gondor, thanks to my Patreon supporters, so let's go ahead and get started. I know that further battle with the Corsairs is unavoidable. Here we go with book two. I know that further battle with the Corsairs is unavoidable, Landang. As ruler of the city, it is my task to defend the people of Dol Amroth for as long as I am able. To do that, I must learn what I can what I can of our weaknesses and our strengths. Many of our strengths outnumber our weak our weaknesses, as unlikely as that may seem. If you will help me in this, go to the wharf and speak to the captains of the ships moored there. They will know the seaworthiness of their own ships and whether they might be made re battle ready. The true sea power of Gondor is harbored at the city of Pelagir, but that port is far to the east, and we cannot depend upon its ships for aid in time. All right, so we will go talk with the ship captains and learn of how ready we are to face this Corsair threat. All right, let's find out what this captain knows. The daughter of Imrahil wishes to know how much sea power she commands. The daughter of Imrahil wishes to know how much sea power she commands. Very little, truth be told. I'm afraid the Alfrothal and those few others will have to stand for her fleet, unless she can request aid from Pelagia. Look to the sea gate if you wish to know the truth of it. Um... Oh, wow. Corsairs. You see gathered Corsair fleet beyond the sea gate. You see the truth of it? We are hemmed in and cannot escape. You see the truth of it? Numerous Corsair ships lie beyond the sea gate. And every unfriendly eye of the, on the dock of each is trained upon that narrow space. Any Gondorian ship that tries to pass into open water would be savaged by the weapons of Umbar before reaching freedom or launching any attack. We are hammered in and cannot escape. If you speak to Captain Norith of Ross Sigil, she will tell you much the same. All right, let us go speak with this other captain and see if she will speak the same. All right, let us see what you have to say, lady. Did you see the mighty ship in the waters outside the city? Before I became captain of my own ship, I served two years before the mast of the Alfroval. I know Merel to be wise, a wise captain and judge of the seas, but he is prone to recklessness. If he believes passage through the sea gate is a foolish journey, it must be truly so. Do you see the mighty ship in the waters outside the city? Look through the sea gate and tell me what you see. You see an enormous ship larger than the rest. It must be the flagship of Umbar. Oh, that is the flagship of the Umbar fleet, the Night Jewel. See how that monster makes the other ships look like children's toys floating in a stream? That is the flagship of Umbar fleet, of the Umbar fleet. Nolizimir, in their tongue, Night Jewel. Many Gondorian ships have succumbed to the attacks of the Night Jewel during the years since the disappearance of Thorongil, greatest foe of the Corsairs. Would that he had returned before the Night Jewel was constructed, and might have proved it. But none have seen Thorongil since he routed the Corsairs almost forty years ago. He is likely dead. It would not sail my sh I would not sail my ship against the Night Jewel unless I wanted her to lie in the bottom of the sea, Andang. 
None of our ships are a match for that one. Not even Sin Sirenath's Solonir Solohir. Speak to him to see if he thinks otherwise. Well, clearly everybody's on the same boat. Not literally, but, you know, figuratively speaking, everyone seems to be on the same boat. There are no good tidings, friend. Lothiriel wants a report from the captains of the ships docked at her city. There are no good tidings, friend. If there is any good fortune here, it is that very few ships are trapped at the wharf, and more of Gondor's fleet must be found at the port city of Pelagia to the east. There are too f they are too far away to help us here, but at least those ships are not caught like rabbits in a trap. As we are, it is hopeless. I told my crew to find what merriment they can throughout the city. I did not think there was much to be gained by keeping my crew here, and the sight of the fleet beyond the sea gate seemed likely to put my men in poor spirits. It gave them leave to find what merriment they might in the city. But if Lothiriel has, has not given up hope, I fear their absence will prove an embarrassment to me. Go to the Harper's Court on the west side of the city, and tell my crewmen to return to the Solra here. We will do what we can to make her ready for battle, as unlikely a victory as that may seem to be. Alright, so we got a foolish captain that is willing to uh, kill himself. <laughs> that is great. So now we get to find his unlikely crew. So let's see here. Oh, of course, way over in the Harper's Court. Why would it be close by, Turbine? Oh, Bod, how useless you are now. The trait trees are in the game. And let's talk to this crewman. Yes, let me put my hands on my hips. That'll make him see my point. What is the point? We are trapped here anyway. Alright, let's see if this crewman thinks any differently. Let me put my hands on my hips. You know it, buddy. Captain Sidmouth owes me a drink for this. Oh. Yeah, whatever, buddy. You're a weird person anyway. All right, you too. Fine, fine. I will return to the ship. Oh, <laughs> you are a crazy drunk. Yes, yes, what is the point? We're trapped here. Anyway, I already heard that line of dialogue, buddy put my hands on my hip, you better not give the same line of dialogue. Ah, I'm going. Yeah, alright, buddy. Now let us return and study the situation, because clearly we haven't done enough of that already. Alright, so we have returned back to find that there are Corsairs of Umba waiting. These Corsairs came here under a flag of peace, but I do not trust them. Be careful, friend. These Corsairs passed through the Seagate under a flag of peace, but I do not trust them, and you would be wise not to do so either. Not to do so either? So I'd be wise to trust them? Well, that is quite... Look at that axe. My goodness, buddy. You are strong. You are strong. Look, look, buddy. See all those people? They have big axes. You should just stay away. You have a lot of hair on your chest, you know? I bring a message for the ruler of this city. I bring a message for the ruler of this city. Can you take me to this man? Amer sees something in your eye and smirks. So it is true. A woman rules this city. Bring me before her and I will deliver my message. You tell the emissary that you will bring the message, but not the messenger. He nods, apparently impressed with your response. Tell her this, then. Balcor, the scourge, heir of Castamir, and ruler of every Gondorian shore leaked by the waves, invites her to a treat with him on the deck of the mighty ship Nozamir. I will... Await your response. 
Well, that sounds like a trappity trap trap if I've ever heard one. But let us go and relay the message, because, you know, clearly, as stated, we will be a much bigger hero in Gondor by delivering messages. All right, let us go. All right, here we are with the message. How do the ships fare? How do the ships fare, Hande? Is it as grim an outlook as I have heard? You tell Lothiel what you witnessed at the wharf. This is a fair measure of what I expected, but I see that you have more to say. What else can there be? Something must be done, but what, I wonder? Lothiel listens impassively to as you give her the message from the emissary of Umbar. Thank you for bringing this message to me. Something must be done. That much is certain. But what, I wonder? I could use your counsel. I value your opinion and place it among the ranks of my other advisers. If you can spare the time, I could use your counsel, Andang. All right, let us travel. I am the ruler of Dol Amroth while my father is away, and it is my duty to do what is best for its people. How am I to know what that is, Andang? Would my father treat with Balcor? Would he have gone to his emissary's flagship under a banner of peace? What would my father have done if he were here? It does not matter to me what Prince Imrahil might have done if it were in his daughter's place, for he is not. I do not think Balcor would have made this request of Imrahil. She must not trust him. He is a snake, like the others who call themselves heirs of Castamir, and his flagship will not be a place of safety for her. Or for anyone. You must urge her to reject this proposal. Like I didn't already know that. You must not go. That is reckless. You are right. It is a reckless act. But should I not make the risk if it means saving lives? Who said it means saving lives? I do not trust Balcor, but I want to save my city. Could it be this is the way to accomplish it? Do not go. Could it be this is the only way to bring peace? No, Lothariel. And Deng is right. Balcor will do you harm if you go. But if this course might save innocence, innocence, might it not? What if another were to go, an adventurer, one used to danger? Do you mean Andang? No, the wall on the side of the mountain. Of course I mean Andang. Our brave champion is willing, that is. This seems to me a wiser course, Andang. If you are willing to risk the adventure... Balcahor cannot be trusted, but you may be better prepared to deal with any treachery he might think to enact. Walk with me, and I will do my best to prepare you for this errand. This emissary of Unbar will row you to the Night Jewel. You will be beyond help of Gondor or the Avorim, but fear not. I know you have the strength and wits to survive any treachery. Remain alert. Do not trust the words of Balcor or any of his men. If you see an opportunity to seize any advantage, you should take it. Do you understand? Of course I understand. I'll be taking over the ship in no time. Don't worry. All right. All right, talk to Lothiriel. I thank you, Andang. 
Stay watchful in the company of Balakor. I know he is not to be trusted, and you should watch him carefully. Do what you can for the people of Dol Amroth. I will have gone myself. But if this plan eases Dorthanath's mind, well, then it shall be done. All right, so we're now infiltrating a ship. And unlike Jajax, we are not wearing female clothing, so that is good. The Corsair rode you to the Night Jewel in awkward and unpleasant silence. This is the Nozomir, the Jewel of Umbar, and flagship of Balkor, the Scourge. You are here under a flag of peace, but if it were otherwise, you would never leave it, Handang. I will bring you to Balkor. He will not be pleased that you have come instead of Imrahil's daughter. But that is not of my concern. That must be yours. This way. All right. Captain, the city's ruler sends her response. You are not the daughter of Ibrahil. Did Omar fail to convey my request? I will slay him where he stands, if this to be so. Captain, I meant no disrespect. So Omer delivered the message, but Lothiriel elected to send you in her stead. How am I to interpret this response? It reveals that she does not respect my wishes and distrusts my word. It is a cowardly response, for it shows she values her own life and safety above those of others. But it also shows wisdom. If she had come here, that would be no question. Condor would be mine. How much would the prince have given to save his daughter? <laughs> it does not matter. A mere exercise of the mind. Walk with me, Andang. Well, there's only so many places we can walk. We're on a ship, buddy. Stand, Amir. You shame yourself. I assume you have the power to speak for Dol Amroth, Andang? Do you understand that my fleet now controls the Seagate? None can enter or leave without my permission. In every way except title, I am now the Lord of Dole Amroth. Aside from the fact that there's plenty of ways to escape by land, but that's besides the point. But you must already have known this, Sanding. Most of Gondor's warriors have been called to battles elsewhere. Even were they here, this is little they could do against the fleet of Umbar. But I have been a poor host. You must be quite parched, and I have done naught but tell you things you already know. These bottles have... These bottles belong to my personal stock. Have a sip of the finest wines of Umbar. Oh, no. Um, let's choose the red one. The wine is amongst the best you have ever tasted. Look around you, Andang. What do you see? You see the seafaring power of Umbar, rebuilt from nothing. Thirty years ago, a hero of Gondor sailed to Umbar at the head of, the f of a fleet. He burned the ships he found at the port and took the city. But the Corsairs have spent the time nursing their hurts and rebuilding their power. No hero will save Gondor from them at this time. 
Where is that hero now, Andang? He is gone, and now I have come to return that unver that overdue favor. But I will burn his fleet as he did that of Umbar. But there will be nothing left to rebuild when I am finished with it. Well, you clearly have anger issues. This is but a portion of my fleet. I will go with the rest of them to Pelagia, where I will seize the port. Gondor does not have the strength to resist me. Therefore, I make the following demand. I demand the complete and unconditional surrender of the Gondorian coast. All right, well, I think that this is a good place to stop. We have set up the villain for possibly the uh, rest of this uh, book. But till then, thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and I'll see you again real soon for more of Central Gondor. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button below. And if you'd like to see more of my daily content, feel free to subscribe, and you'll be notified when that new content comes out. And also, if you'd like to help support my channel and help me continue to create high-quality videos, feel free to support me on Patreon, and you can get all sorts of great rewards in the process. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon for another video.